Hello, everybody. This is, I'm at my house. This is my cat, just for context. Hey, baby. That's a baby striped cat. Anyway, and, um, and the other day, I did a video that showed how our corner of our house is rotting. And um, we are trying to, we don't want the guy who's helping us to use a sawzall to, um, we don't want him to cut through the rotted side of the house. So I've been carefully pulling the boards off, um, which I know are painted uh, with lead paint. The outside boards aren't painted with lead paint, but the underboards are painted with lead paint because we had new siding. And then just under the new siding, there's there's uh, tar paper here. Here's a bit of the tar paper. And then under the tar paper is the lead painted siding. Here's a good example. New siding, tar paper, lead painted siding. And we were talking about pulling the stuff off because we don't want the contractor to cut through it with the sawzall. We don't want to create a lead paint hazard. And, um, and this is what was under the boards, which we knew were rotten. But what we didn't know is we have a whole city of ants, giant ants. These guys are big. Here's a good, good one. This is my finger. Wait, where's my finger? Here's my finger next to the ant. Um, terrifying. Anyway, so we're carefully in on a wet, mucky day, trying to remove some of the rotted boards so that our friend can help us put new boards on. What we didn't really realize was how far in the rot went. It's like, this is completely termite ridden crap in here. And I knock some of it, that, there's, the lead paint is painted board part is taken off already. But then I uh, took the shovel and I just sort of, and the wood just kind of, it's not really wood anymore, it's just like termite poo. The stuff just comes right, right off. There it goes. And that's our house, or at least some of our house. We always knew this house that's a big ant, it sure is. We always knew this was a teardown um, when we bought it, what was that, 12 years ago? Um, we just thought we'd get around to doing that sooner. And so a couple other interesting things. That's the, in there, the white that you see, that's our drywall, I don't know if you can see it. And then this is our insulation, the insulation paper. The funny part is, yesterday, or the other day when I did the video, I mentioned how that the house had a faux partial perimeter foundation, which I knew when we bought it, um, that someone had just made this faux foundation, which is right here. This is Tamara's version of this piece of shit old house. Um, this is what $600,000 buys you in Portland. Anyway, um, 12 years ago. So, so this is concrete, here's wood, and this is concrete. And I knew it was a faux partial perimeter foundation. What I didn't know, and I thought it was hysterical when, the, when we pulled this off, is how thin it is. This is the concrete. This is how thin it is. It's not even a half inch wide. So there's our full partial perimeter foundation, fully exposed. Someone put the foundation there to make it look like it was a real foundation. So when the house sold, uh, it wouldn't be questioned by someone who wasn't looking too closely, but I knew because I'm me um, that it was crap. I just didn't know it was that little amount of concrete uh, masquerading as a foundation. Usually these are like an inch thick or two inches thick, but this is like half an inch thick. And for those who are just tuning in, um, what was the most fun in doing this was uncovering these guys. I don't know. I guess they're carpenter ants. There's a whole colony there. <laughs> My son Avi has OCD, so I can't tell him about this. I mean, what I'd love to do is have a contractor come in here and fix it all for us. Uh, but we're going to have to try and fix it ourselves because the rot got so bad that, um, and that's from a gutter downspout thing not working properly. Uh, the rot started up there and we knew it was rotting. 
um, but but it looks like it's actually gone into some of the uh, structural members of the house. I'm not sure. We'll know more soon. Anyway, um, so gross. This is what happens. So again, for I'm just going to close out this little video. So what I'm doing today is I'm trying to, in a lead safe way, because it's raining, uh, remove boards and chuck them in the trash, which I'm allowed to do because I'm the homeowner. Not all, these aren't uh, lead painted boards. Um, there are, these are, these are the new boards that are lead free that were on top of the lead painted boards. And then let me just see if I can find a lead painted board in here. The thing is the lead painted boards that are in here are so deteriorated that they're, they're not really boards anymore. Um, and so just from things falling down, there's lead paint chips on the ground, which we're trying to keep our cats away from. And, um, and we're going to be scooping all that up and removing the soil. So we'll remove the boards in full. And I'm just trying to make it remove some of them before my friend comes to help so that he doesn't have to use a saw to cut through the lead paint. That's my biggest problem. I don't mind picking up and making sure that there aren't any chips and removing the soil um, down here. What I what I would really have a problem with is uh, using a sawzall or other thing to cut through it all. Even though we bought this house because it was a lead safe option, because we knew it had all new siding over the old siding, um, the old siding still needs to be dealt with when you're dealing with uh, these kinds of things going through. Just for fun, since I'm here, um, and that's our cat midnight. So this is our dryer vent. And my husband uh, and I got in a really big fight, I don't know, about 10 years ago, because he drilled all the way through the uh, siding, both the old and the new, to put a hole for this dryer vent where you put it in the wrong place. It's by the toilet by accident. And so we had a big fight because I knew that he drilled through the uh, old lead siding to, to do that, and he hadn't thought about that. So sometimes, sometimes people forget um, that there's old lead painted siding underneath the new siding. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Let's see. Ashley says, I wonder how the ants are affected by lead. Well, they're walking around in circles. <laughs> I don't know. They were uh, pretty upset when I upset their little house here. Um, they're enormous ants. These ants are like longer than half an inch each. I don't know. I guess they're carpenter ants. All right. Wish me luck. And, uh, oh boy. Can I test an ant? Yeah, I could. I could like crush an ant up and kill it and put it in a bag and test it with the XRF. Um, I don't think they're eating the lead paint though. The lead paint was protecting them and they're up there eating the bare wood that was underneath the structural membranes and the bare wood because the lead paint um, was on the surface wood, which was here, but all this under stuff here wasn't painted at all. Uh, the house was built in 1905, and uh, this part, I don't know when it was built. It was, like, it was originally a one-room cabin, and they added on and added on. So it has no structural integrity and no, um, what do you call it? Uh, anyway, it's a piece of junk. We knew that when we bought it. Um, we just didn't know it takes so long to deal with it. Okay, everybody, I think that's it for now. I might do another video later. Thanks for tuning in. And again, uh, oh my goodness, wish me luck. And maybe someone can like say, su submit this to some, this old house program or something and say, hey, my friend Tamara needs help. Her house is falling apart and she needs to protect her kids. <laughs> Thanks, Donna Joy. All right, talk to you later. If you have uh, questions, want to learn more about dealing with lead paint, like this chunk right here in uh, housing and lead safe work practices and renovation, you can post here on Facebook or uh, on my blog, leadsafemama.com. Thanks again. Bye-bye.